Hello and welcome to this video looking back at um, last weekend's Spanish Grand Prix. which was round number six, of course. Spain. As with previous races, I will first write down the positions, the finishing positions, top 10, and then the top 10 championship positions for both drivers and uh, constructors, and then I'll just um, talk a little bit about it. Okay. this in um, focus. positions. So, a bit paranoid about the uh, focus. Constructors now, or D10 constructors. Unfortunately, there are only 10 these days. I would love it if we could um, go back to when we had uh, 26 cars, 13 teams. Actually, a lot of teams only had one car back in the sort of 80s. You'd have, well, not a lot, but a few teams with just one car. But now I think it's um, built into the rules that they have to have two cars. Oh, 
I would actually like to have each team having three cars. Because then if you get one dominant car, at least you've got three drivers going for the championship instead of just two. The problem is that um, you would often get the podium with all three drivers from one team. And that wouldn't be good for sponsorship for the other teams. It wouldn't be good because at least if you've got one dominant team, at least, uh, you know, third place would be uh, third spot on the podium would, would be from a different team. Um, but you could have a, an instance where every single podium spot for a number of races is taken up by one team. And that's not good for the, all the other teams. It's not good for the sponsorship of those other teams. But from a pure fan perspective, it'd be great if every team had um, three cars. A lot more expensive, of course, though. OK, so there you have it. That's the little rundown from Spain. Take my little red, get my little red pen out in case I need it. I might not use it. So what do we think? Well, Verstappen, um, would he have been on pole position? Would he have not have been on pole position? Uh, we don't really know, but of course he had an issue on his last uh, qualifying run. But it would have been difficult to beat Leclerc because that was like a spellbinding performance in qualifying by Leclerc. It definitely was Leclerc's race. Great shame for him to retire. Um, some issue with the power unit. Um, but, of course, Verstappen had two retirements. His were from second place, both of his. Um, this time, Leclerc's has been from the lead. Um, but that means, I think, out of the two Ferraris and two Red Bulls, I think it's uh, Science is the only one that hasn't had a mechanical retirement so far. Um, of course, he's had other retirements, uh, two other retirements, but that was due to uh, incidents. So, yeah, Verstappen, I'm amazed he got out of the gravel trap. I don't know how he got out of the travel trap, get gravel trap, but somehow he did uh, when he had that big slide off. But what a great race, basically, between Russell and the two Red Bulls. Um, when Verstappen had his off, came back just behind Russell and Perez. That was a fantastic scrap. It, that really, as if we didn't know that Russell was very good already. Watching him hold off um, Perez, first Perez and then Verstappen. Some fantastic, um, there was one particular overtaking manoeuvre into the first corner, wasn't there, when Verstappen sort of, he got past, but then um, Russell still had his car in there and he just slid just in front of, uh, and his rear tyres just slid just in front of Verstappen's uh, front wing. Oh dear, that's so very close to getting a nasty um, puncture or worse there. But fantastic uh, car placement uh, by Russell throughout that, all the way through that duel. Amazing stuff. Um, and at the time, of course, that was fighting for second place because Leclerc was still in the race. But I think Leclerc went out on lap 27, was it, I think? Uh, and suddenly that was then a battle for the lead. Perez was quite, quite rightly saying, look, let me have a go at him. I can, because by now he had closed up to the back of Verstappen. So in light of the team orders that Perez got later to move over for Verstappen, um, I think Verstappen can, uh, Perez can be a little bit aggrieved that uh, Verstappen didn't move over for him. Um, because was Perez on fresher tyres? I think he was on fresher tyres at the time. Um, and of course, when Verstappen came into the pits, Perez was able to get past Russell then. As soon as he had a chance of getting past Russell, he did. 
Um, but it was fairly obvious as soon as Leclerc retired, it was fairly obvious it was going to be a Red Bull 1-2. Russell was going to going to fight as much as he could, but it was going to be a Red Bull 1-2. Um, what about Lewis Hamilton, though? <laughs> oh, where would he have been without that little crash? Well, as soon as I saw uh, Magnussen come alongside him at the start, I was a little bit fearful because Magnussen is driving very well this year, but he's, he's always been very aggressive. You go, you go into a corner alongside Magnussen and you don't know what's going to come out. What's going to come out the other side? Maybe just a big mushroom cloud. You just don't know with Magnussen. Um, I'm not really certain that it was either of theirs fault either. It's but just a racing incident, I should think. So it's not that I'm blaming Magnussen, but it does seem to be that Magnussen, in previous years anyway, has managed to get, him, get himself into these sort of accidents because he's so aggressive. But Hamilton, unbelievable performance throughout the race. Charging back through the field, he was 50 seconds behind the leader. And before he had to cool down his engine in the last couple of laps, he was just 40 seconds behind Verstappen, having been 50 um, behind uh, at the start. So that speaks volumes. Fantastic performance. It's such a shame, but it's really promising for future races. Not necessarily Monaco, because that's... That's just all about qualifying, really, isn't it? So, we, but um, in the next, um, what's after Monaco? Maybe Azerbaijan, possibly. Um, I don't know. But anyway, uh, he's going to be doing very well in upcoming races, Hamilton. He was on fire today, even though he seemed to want to give up in order to protect the engine. And in a way, that was justifiable because, I mean, they, they nearly lost the two engines um, in the Russell and Hamilton towards the end of the race. So, he was justified in being concerned about continuing when he was so far down. And we still don't know the state of the engines. Maybe they have been damaged in some way. Sainz. Oh dear, poor old Sainz, eh? He's just being... I mean, I predicted it at the start of the season that he would struggle against Leclerc, even though they were pretty much level last year. I thought, given a much better car, the quality of Leclerc will come through. Um... It might just be down to driving styles. Maybe Leclerc is better um, with this particular Ferrari. Um, that can happen all the time. Was it was it 2013, Ricardo and... Um, was it 2013 or 2014? 2013, maybe. Ricardo and Vettel in the Red Bull. And Ricardo outdrove four-time... Uh, no, it must have been 2014, because Vettel won the championship in 2013, didn't he? So, yeah, 2014. And Ricardo outdrove uh, Vettel, basically, in the Red Bull. It's often just down to the particular style. And look at Ricardo this year, and last year being outdriven by Lando Norris. Um, it's just how you adapt to that particular car in that, in that particular year. So, science... I do feel for him because it might not be his fault. It might just be down to his driving style with the Ferrari. But it's making him look very second rate against Leclerc. And that's very unfortunate. Spinning off the track again today. Still pulled back uh, 12 points on Leclerc though. But, uh, you know, Leclerc was leading. So science is still going to feel, feel very bad after the race. Bottas again. Bottas. When Hamilton and Bottas were both in the Mercedes... It was rare for them to be alongside each other fighting. They're actually fighting alongside each other more so now. Bottas always seems to be hovering around Hamilton uh, late, late in the race, scrapping over positions. And um, he finished just behind Hamilton. They're very close in the championship as well. Ocon, look at that, another strong performance by Ocon. Another strong performance. He's got 30, 30 of the 34 points that Alpine have got. That's incredible. Poor old, poor old Alonso, who is also driving very well, but for some reason, just things are not just not going his way. Norris, though, look at that. Eighth place. Uh, his teammate Ricardo in finished twelfth. Um, I think it was twelfth. Yeah. Um, how did that happen? Because Norris uh, was incredibly unwell. Uh, all race weekend, obviously well enough to drive 
um, but still feeling rough. And in that heat, that's an incredible performance, pure adrenaline. And he probably felt terrible. It probably hit him just how bad he felt after the race. That adrenaline stops. That's when the illness you've been suffering from properly kicks in. And uh, he was in a bad way after the race. Sunoda, great that he got some points there, or a point. Um, I think he's had three points finishes so far this year. So in the championship, you could argue it's all about Verstappen and Leclerc. But look at Russell, he's still the only driver to have scored um, double points, uh, basically, in every single race. Fifth or higher in every single race. Very impressive. And he's, he's, he's in amongst it with the Ferraris and the uh, Red Bulls. He's in amongst it, ahead of science, managing to stay ahead of science. But for Stappen, who was... How far behind was he? He was about... Was he... A, 50 points or something behind Leclerc just three races ago. Now he's ahead. That shows you how quickly it can turn around. And I said it in my last um, video after Miami that um, because Ferrari have started the championship so well, it, I don't think personally that it matters how many races they win. If they lose both championships, if they win one, okay, but if they lose both, then doesn't matter how many races they've won it'll be a disaster whereas had they not been in contention for the championship but just picked up a few wins along the way that would be considered a great improvement of course sort of much better than last year and the year before um, but they've started right from the very first race they've started off as championship contenders so anything less and not not just championship contenders but dominating the championship in the first few races, partly because of Verstappen, Verstappen's retirements and Perez uh, in Bahrain. But I, I'm sure they must be aware of that, that now it's not about race wins. It would have been after last year, it would have been going into the season, it would have been about getting race wins. It's not about that now. It's got to be about championships. That's why today's retirement would have been so painful. Perez, lots of questions for Perez about um, should he, should there be team orders? Yes, Verstappen has won four races. Perez hasn't won any. But, I mean, the championship gap is only 25 points between Verstappen and Perez. Um, you don't engage team orders when the drivers are so close like that. And Perez was a lot closer. I've been a bit critical of Perez uh, lately. That's simply because I, I really like him as a driver. And he's just, a, he's just been a little bit muted since being in Red Bull. He's not the feisty firecracker the, that he was in uh, Racing Point or Sauber or even McLaren when he was jousting with uh, Button. Um, he's just gone a bit limp um, being Verstappen's teammate, but he, he put in a strong performance uh, in this Grand Prix. Still second to Verstappen, but it was a, it was a much, much stronger performance. So no, but team orders definitely not. I think it's unfair to ask him as well. Uh, if team orders are likely to happen. And uh, and the team as well. The team are obviously going to say, depends on the individual race, doesn't it? There might be team orders in a, in a particular race. Move aside, let this, this one through because he's faster than you. But as regards to the whole championship, you're not going to have team orders when there's just 25 points between them. Let's move that out of the way. So, yeah, that's ridiculous, I think, to be talking about that. 
Hamilton, can he win the championship? Can he win the championship from here? Six races in. I mean, there's only 22 races. So it's not going to happen, is it? But um, he's definitely he's definitely going to win some races. Has to win some races. I said at the, I said at the start of the season that I thought the championship was between Verstappen and Leclerc, um, with an outside chance for Hamilton and Russell if if their if their car problems are sorted. Well, Russell is in a position definitely to attack for the championship. Seventy four points. He's definitely in a good position, but he seemed to be a little bit slower than Hamilton in today's race. Even though he was driving fantastically uh, with the Red Bulls, he just seemed a little bit slower than Hamilton. Maybe Hamilton was more fired up as he was coming through the field. Don't really know. But Russell, definite chance for Russell, I think. Hamilton, I think he's just too far behind, really. Look at Bottas doing so well, 38. Now, unfortunately, his teammate, Guan Yu Zhou, or Zhou Guan Yu, um, only one point so far. Wasn't that in the first race? I think it might have been in the very first race in Bahrain. Anyway, um, but Alfa Romeo doing very well, 39. And Bottas is always there, every race he's there, sort of fifth, sixth position, every single race. I mean, Magnussen showed that in the first race, first two or three races he was, he was doing really well, the first race he was doing particularly well. But... So nothing since. Bottas has been consistent. Consistently fifth, basically. Fifth or sixth running in each race. Ocon, Ocon 30 points. And again, um, as we've already mentioned, he's got 30 of the 34 points of Alpine. Fantastic. Really need to see Magnussen pick up some more points, so don't we? Poor old Williams, they were nowhere today. Uh, at least Latifi finished um, ahead of Albon. That'd be good for him. Um, I, lots of rumours, of course, about him being replaced partway through the season, which is always a massive insult because there must be a big fine from the team for breaking contract with a driver partway through the season to replace them. So that's very demoralising <laughs> to think that your team is willing to pay a big fine to get rid of you. Deary me. Um, that is not nice. Partway through the season, that's awful. We don't know that he's going to be replaced, but uh, talk of it. Talk of him being replaced by Nick De Vries. Now, didn't Nick De Vries win the F2 Championship a couple of years ago? Or was it even last year? <laughs> Um, a couple of years, years ago was Mick Schumacher. Anyway, um, Mercedes, they've still got an outside chance in the Constructors' Championship, depending on how well, as I say, depending on how well the car comes good. Mercedes might have a chance, Russell might have a chance, Hamilton probably too far away. But we go to Monaco next, and I really hope Sainz manages to get something, because he looked, at the end of that race, he looked distraught uh, when he was being interviewed. He looked in a bit of a state. And um, I do feel for him, because he's um, a very good driver. Very good. I mean, you can say that about all the drivers, yes, I know, but he's he seemed to have control of Norris when they were teammates, although Norris was... Less experienced then, of course. But even though I predicted Leclerc to be, you know, beating Science this year, I I really want Science to come back, and um, it'd be great if he can win a couple of races. Stop spinning off the track, basically. So there you go. That's the championship position at the moment. And that was the Spanish Grand Prix. Next up, Monaco. Um, I'll do a little video of that uh, after the race as well uh, next week. But until then, 
thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And if you'd like to subscribe, please do so. Or like the video or comment on the video. And I will see you in my next video. Thank you very much. Goodbye.